Deep water culture is one of the premier methods of growing vegetables and aquaponics. Today I want to show you how to make your own wooden deep water culture bed for your aquaponics system at home. Let's do it. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode from New Agrarian on YouTube where we're all about aquaponics, hydroponics, and agriculture. Before COVID drove lumber prices through the roof, deep water culture beds were actually a pretty affordable and viable method of growing vegetables. So let's talk about it. Okay guys, so we can actually split the construction of this bed into four steps. The frame, the floor, the walls, and the liner. Let's start with the frame. When you make these beds, you want to make them in multiples of four. So you want to make them either 8, 16, 24, 32 feet long, etc. because plywood is 8 feet long. And you want to make them a multiple of four feet wide because plywood is four feet wide. So the one I'm going to be making here is four feet wide by 32 feet long. I'll put the bill of materials for different size beds in the description below. So I'm making this bed on a concrete floor. So the first thing that I want to do is put some pavers around the perimeter of the bed just so the wood doesn't come into contact with the floor and possibly get wet and whatnot. So I'm just going to give those a roughly four foot spacing apart. And I'm actually going to do those two pavers high so there's room under the bed for a two inch piece of PVC pipe in case I want to do drainage or add a pump or whatnot. Next, I'm going to lay out my lumber for the outside of the frame. So we're going to need to put studs inside of the frame walls every 16 inches on center. So in order to do that, I'm going to put marks at 16 and 3 quarters. This is going to put the outside of my 2 by 4 stud right at 16 and 3 quarters. The middle of that stud then would be right at 16 inches on center. So once I mark that 16 and 3 quarters, I'm going to put an X over the side that I want the 2 by 4 fastened to. People do this different ways. This is just how I'm doing it here. The next line would then go at 32 and 3 quarters. The outside would be at 32 and 3 quarters. And again, that would put the middle of that stud right at 32 inches. So I'm going to do that the whole way down the frame. Then I'm going to start cutting my studs. So for a four foot wide bed, you want these studs to be 45 and one half inches. This is important. The outside of the frame is going to add three inches to the width of your bed. Put in the actual width of the bed at 48 and a half inches. 48 inches for the piece of plywood and a quarter inch on either side of extra space. This can be for your tubing that you need to slide in for a raft play so the raft doesn't fit in there very snugly. It's good to have a little bit of extra space. So 48 and a half inches is what you shoot for for the width of your bed. That would put the entire size of the bed at 51 and a half inches after we add the outside board. We'll get to that in a second. Once I have my 45 and a half inch studs cut, I'm going to start fastening them in place. So I'll start at the ends. Again, you can see the mark that I made. The center of this stud would then be right at 16 inches. And I'm going to go down the line and put in studs every place that I marked a 16 inch on center space. And one thing I want you guys to see is obviously you can't buy a 32 foot long 2x4 for the outside of this. So I had to use a few different length 2x4s for the outside of the frame here. But when you combine sections of frame, notice how I just screwed these two studs together. This is how you join two sections of frame together. Once the frame's complete, we can start screwing down our plywood. You're going to see why the 16 inches on center is important here. So again, you can see how the plywood's getting screwed down. Make sure you screw it directly into the studs. And after the plywood is screwed down completely, we're going to actually go around the outside of the frame and add another 2x4 along the entire outside. This is going to be our support for the wall. And again, in this shot, there's two things I want you to notice. The stud in the middle being set at 16 inches on center allows two pieces of plywood to be screwed to it. One on this half and one on the other half that I'm about to slide in. That's going to give support around the outside of the plywood and allow you to screw it into something. And on this side of the plywood, you'll see this little quarter inch space. This gap is important again for raft play and the insertion of tubes and whatnot. So I'm going to slide in my next piece of plywood and you see how it sits on the stud. Perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and screw in all the plywood onto the studs. And now I've got my frame and my floor done. Now it's time for the walls. I'm using 2x12s for the walls. You can use 2x10s as well, but I would not go any lower. And I'm simply going to put the 2x12s right on top of the frame. And I'm going to fasten them to the floor using these little pieces of 2x4. They are the length of the frame plus the length of the walls. 
which I believe is like 13 inches and change. Six screws in this piece of wood should hold it in place pretty strong. One thing you need to be careful of is when you put screws in the top section here that you don't poke them the whole way through the walls. That could puncture your liner and cause problems later down the line. So make sure you get screws that don't quite go the whole way through the wall. And I'm just going to put supports the whole way down until this thing is nice and sturdy. That leaves me with that little quarter inch gap in the inside of the bed, which I'm going to fill with silicone. You can also skip this, but I just do it for peace of mind so it doesn't pinch the raft in any places. And before we put in our liner, we just want to do a quick inspection and make sure that all the gaps are filled and there's nothing poking out. So if there's any sharp edges, I like to just put some duct tape over it just to add extra protection underneath for the liner. Now it's time to put our liner in. So you can use scrap wood for this, but you do need little pieces of wood to fasten the liner to the bed, which you can see here I have laying on the floor. These are just one by twos or something that I had laying around. And another thing is if you're going to be draining water out of this bed or routing the water somewhere else, make sure that you do your drain hole in the bed before you put your liner in. I'm going to be pumping water out of this bed, so I put a little 2 inch drain hole at the end of the bed here, and I'll show you how to put the liner on now. So once I shot back all the sawdust and clean it out really nice, I'm going to just simply unroll the liner and make sure that I have ample slack around the entire outside. I'm going to cut a little hole in the liner for my bulkhead fitting drain, and I know this is a little bit nerve wracking, but as long as you use a razor knife and take your time, this will not leak and make sure that the bulkhead fitting is installed with the gasket on the inside and always hand tighten it. Once the liner is in the bed kind of loosely fitting, I'm going to use water to push the liner into all the corners so it fits real snug. You can use bricks or something to do this too, but I prefer to use water because it doesn't scratch anything. You can see here, now it's starting to get tight and now I'll fasten the liner down. So here's all the pieces of scrap wood that I cut. We'll just screw those down nice and straight into the top of our walls, and it's gonna kinda pinch the liner in between, and it should be all set. So I'll go ahead and make my way the whole way around, screwing down the liner, and it's pretty much done after that. After the liner's screwed the whole way down, we'll go around the outside and just cut the excess off just so it looks a little bit neater. And that's pretty much it, guys. This is a large bed, obviously. One sheet of plywood would make an adequate size bed for you at home. A little 4x8 bed, you can grow a lot of vegetables in that. But it's the same process. So that's it, guys. If you're thinking about getting into aquaponics in your own farm, give this a try. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And thanks for watching.